Hey guys, Matthew here from the MMAT YouTube channel. I saw a video recently on the interwebs about a guy shooting 22 caliber air rifle pellets through a 22 caliber rifle using nail gun blanks. So obviously I had to try this out for myself. Initially I wasn't going to make a video on it because of course it's already been done, but then I had an idea. The guy in the initial video, uh, Teo Fladermis, inspired another guy on YouTube, Ryan Ham, to chronograph the pellets to see what sort of velocities could be achieved. It turns out that speeds of just under 3,000 feet per second were possible. That is fast. Now the reason for this centerfire-like speed is the fact that these pellets only weigh 14 grains, or less than a gram for you metric-minded folks out there. So when you put something that light behind a charge of propellant, that's designed to drive nails into concrete, you can see where this insane velocity is coming from. So, my idea is this. Tannerite can only be activated by a projectile traveling at more than 2,000 feet per second. That means rimfire rounds won't set it off. Um, you can get rimfire sensitive tannerite, but we can't get it up here in Canada, so we're, we're stuck with the, the original stuff. My question is, will a pellet traveling at close to 3,000 feet per second have the energy required to light off the tannerite. So, we're going to head out to the range and we're going to find out. Now while I'm out there experimenting with that, we're also going to work on seeing what kind of accuracy we can get out of this. The guys on the video initially weren't getting very good accuracy. Um, we're going to be using a Marlin and Marlins have micro groove rifling. Now, I'm not sure if that's going to make any difference or not. I kind of hope it will but I'm pretty sure I'm going to be wrong on that, so I, I still don't think we're going to get fantastic accuracy out of it, but we are going to try. Now, something else to note is that it does say on the container here not to use this in your firearm, so I'm not. This is Curtis's firearm, so Curtis, thank you very much. Thank you for letting me use your gun, even though you're finding out about it right about now as you watch the video. So um, I hope it doesn't blow up, and if it does, um, uh, sorry, I guess. I'll get you another one. Seriously, though, don't try this at home. Uh, well, un unless you really want to, and then I say, well, go for it, I guess. Who am I to stand in the way of your happiness and, you know, a potential trip to the ER? All right, let's go hit the range. Let's see what happens. All right, so here's my loading procedure. I'm going to be taking the 22 caliber air pellet. I'm going to stick it on the end of this Allen key because it fits oh so nicely. I will then insert that into the chamber oops, as I knock over the rest of the pellets. And that will seat it right into the lands. What I will do at that point is take the blank I will set that in there, I'll close the bolt, and then I will fire. So I'm not going to show you that each time, I just wanted to show you how I was loading it. Alright, here's the first shot in the accuracy testing. So uh, let's go ahead and take the first shot on target. Wow, that is loud. Louder than a 22. Okay, well here's the group we shot with the 22 ammunition, the, the proper stuff for the rifle. And there's the group we shot with the pellets. So you can see there's really no semblance of accuracy here. Those two sort of group together, but uh, that guy's way off. So I really don't think there's any sort of accuracy to be had out of this, but uh, it doesn't mean it's not fun anyway, right? Twenty-one fifty-seven. Twenty-six, twenty-two. Twenty-six, sixteen. Alright, just to demonstrate the difference in power between twenty-two and then the twenty-two pellet and then a two-two-three, I'm going to shoot three different jugs filled with colored water just to kind of show you the difference in power. First up is the twenty-two. Pretty anemic, if you ask me. Looks like this same jug is holding its water really well, even with a 22 hole in it. So let's go ahead and hit it with the pellet traveling uh, at around 2,600 feet per second behind a nail gun blank. Wow, a little bit of difference there. I think I have just enough time to put a 2 to 3 into the same container again. Let's see what happens. Yeah, that's definitely got some energy. And now the question we've all been waiting for. Will the pellet set off tannerite? Now you've noticed that I don't get the accuracy that I want. 
So this 10 right target is a little closer than the 100 yards they recommend. So do not do this at home. I have got protection on that will keep me safe, as in sunglasses. So that counts, right? I'm going to put the Tannerite in this Ziploc bag so that if it does just hit it, break the container, not set it off, I will be able to save the Tannerite, hit it with the 223, and we'll end this video with a bang one way or another. Let's see what happens. Well, holy crap, it went off with a 22 pellet behind a nail gun blank. I am impressed. Well, this is all that's left of the milk container. I set the uh, tannerite on top of this jug so it wouldn't damage the, the bench that I put it on. We don't want to be damaging range property now. And uh, this is... <laughs> All that's left of the Ziploc. There are no other parts bigger than this. I looked. That thing just completely annihilated the the container and, and this jug. Man, I'm still shaking from the adrenaline rush. That was crazy. All right. Well, closing thoughts on the pellet powered by the nail gun blank. Not accurate enough to be effective for anything other than fun, really. And yes, it sets off Tannerite, but really only at a distance that's not really safe. So I wouldn't really recommend that. Um, it was fun. I don't think I'll do it again. Um, please don't try it at home, but thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and uh, we'll catch you next time.